Actually, I recently watched the Israelis trying to yeah. land on the moon. But I think they was, were was very exciting, almost, but it didn't work. almost, uh, we were at Noah Tel Aviv at the same time. Mm -hmm. And our friends were in the control room and we followed it live. Yeah, and we, we also had a payload on that mission. So we also lost something that day and we were really hoping for them as well to work. But you win and gain an experience <laughs> and the knowledge. <laughs> And there's a new crater on the moon, so wonderful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's let's talk about space exploration. So um, I'm Robert Bohm, the CEO and founder of PT Scientist, a really cool space startup that we will tell you about. And this is Andre Ratloff, our CFO. Um, and I will start with a very cool video that some friends of us from Ariane did, which will get you started, I think, on the right tune. So that is what the mission that we want to do is supposed to look like. So let's talk a little bit about private space exploration here in Europe, something which is very special. So first of all, um, what is our focus point? So we want to focus ourselves as the transatlantic leader in commercial lunar exploration. What does it mean? That means that we have two areas which are quite relevant for us. First of all, it's space logistics. So bringing down the cost to actually do something in space and really in a way that it comes kind of like a normal commodity, that's something like, that it's so cheap, like with, for example, with rockets from SpaceX, that you could do it, try it more than once, just then kind of like having, putting all your money in one basket. And the second thing is the argument like, installing things in space, which you can use for each and subsequent missions. So like in space infrastructure, that's a very big topic for us. And how do these two things come together? First of all, like logistics, and second is infrastructure. So if you look at it, that's kind of, the beginning of this chart, and this is like a timeline with no dates attached to it. So if you look at the beginning, that is actually where we are today. That's when you see payload delivery. That means people want to go to the moon. There's like Donald Trump standing up on Twitter and saying, we want to have boots on the ground. That is something that he does today, but something that started more than 11 years ago in our case for our company that we said, we want to enable lunar transportation. And that is a really big demand there already. So many people want to go to the moon. There's lots of big government budgets, 2.5 billion from the US side, more than 1 billion from Japan, um, China, I don't know, they have probably an unlimited budget for that topic. Uh, Europe also put down quite a lot of money for that. So all of the government agencies suddenly turned their eye towards the moon. So they want to go there. So that is really where this delivery aspect comes in. So that's where you need the spacecraft. That's what you saw in the video, basically being able to securely land things for you on the moon in a, in a successful way. However, if you look into the future, and in the not too distant future, you will see that um, it's not just about delivering things, it's about making space exploration itself easier. In that case, um, simplifying certain things. You don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel all the time. So really bringing something with you that can be used by subsequent missions, and that's what we call in-space infrastructure. A very good example of uh, that some of you might have noticed if you sometimes watch television and you see the commercials from our friends at Vodafone, you will always see that at the end of the commercials, they say, and now also on the moon, which basically means that we're working with Vodafone and Nokia together to bring the first cellular communication network to the surface of the moon. 
And that is really an architecture like a, a cell station, a cell tower that you have outside here, where you can basically, with your smartphone, log in and are connected right away on the moon. You don't need any special infrastructure. Um, you don't need any special antenna to communicate directly with Earth. You can just use a normal LTE modem. So combine these two things, a simplified low-cost delivery with infrastructures like cellular communication basically means that you can use, for example, a very simple thing like an Android smartphone, attach a sensor to it, send it with us cost efficiently to the moon, and you're already connected, get your measurements done, and you have it directly the data there. You don't need any space expertise in that regard. So um, all of these combinations is quite, quite relevant there. Yeah? And how does it look in a global context? So I already mentioned these big budgets being put down. Something which is relevant here is that the focus changed from the government perspective in a way that they said, we no longer want to do it from the government side. It's not like NASA is, for example, looking to do missions to the moon. They're turning towards the private sector. So they want to buy specific services. They say, you know, we don't care about how you get there. We just pay you to deliver a certain amount of payload capacity. Payload capacity is like in a cargo shipping container. You just pay for what you put in there. And it's the same thing what NASA is doing. So they're no longer caring specifically about the mission, but just about getting the job done, which is kind of really helpful in that case because it fuels the economy. So um, all of these budgets are like service budgets in that case. And something interesting to look at. So if we think, talk about um, the big aspect that I mentioned at the beginning, like uh, delivery, then you have really the factor, how much can we deliver? And from the global competition right now, what you can see is that um, everybody kind of focuses on what we call micro lenders. So really like delivering up to 100 kilogram, many of them less. And our spacecraft, what you saw in the video, the Alina spacecraft, is capable of delivering 300 kilograms and more in the future to the surface of the moon. And this already includes then, in future perspective, also the infrastructure hardware that we take with us. So you actually have the capability to deliver larger packets of technology to the surface of the moon and at the same time kind of connect it. So um, that puts us like in a very special spot when it comes to the global position. And I think this is a good moment to hand over to Andre. Yep, oh. thanks. So what's also very special that uh, we are now uh, existing since 10 years and uh, currently entirely funded by the founders themselves. So we do not yet have institutional funding uh, in the company. And we started uh, this year to basically open the gates to take on um, investors' money. So right now in a seed funding round, what you can see there right uh, on the bottom, it's how we kind of bootstrapped um, to this point. So basically we're selling payload revenues. So for our first launch, um, we're now aiming uh, in two years, uh, two to two and a half years time. Um, we already sold 7.5 million uh, euros in, in payloads. Um, we raised uh, 0 0.6 million in equity and uh, got um, almost a million from, from Google at the times of the Google Luna X prize. Um, what is the kind of market? Robert talked about lunar exploration as a market. Um, this is how we see it. So um, it's sort of um, a mixture of assumptions from what the agencies are providing. You can see that there in the gray color on the top. So um, in 2022, we think that there is around 1 billion euro in finance uh, for lunar exploration, coming basically from CLIPS, the NASA program, from the European Space Agency, and from the Chinese. Um, this is growing towards 2026 because Boots on the ground in 2024 from the Americans will coincide also with a permanent lunar presence later on in the later 2020s. So basically, you need companies like us to fly there, to fly tools, to fly payload scientific experiments. And you can see down there in the lower row, um, what is our um, revenue share assumptions for the different missions. So in the first mission, our revenue is 56 million, which is um, less than 10% uh, of this sort of the entire market, and then climbing up to something like 10%. Um, um, so with uh, 300 kilograms of uh, payload capacity, uh, we can definitely make one than 100 million euros plus in revenue for each launch. You can see basically here um, that we are already planning to be profitable in 2021, basically by selling payload. We are also participating in the European Space Agency first public offering for lunar transportation. We are best positioned in Europe um, to basically get the first very significant funding here in Europe for lunar transportation. We're working in a consortium with Ariane Group. So the video you saw in the beginning, 
is produced by with us and Ariane Group, who is our partner, um, basically offering the first payload to, to the moon from Europe. Um, we are planning to fly once every two years. That's why you can see some little bit of bumps there. Um, but we're selling basically payload um, throughout. Also important that I'm sort of the only member of the management who is not founder. Um, so the company is founder lab, uh, which is very good. Um, so we have strong skin in the game. Um, and we're here now since many years, building these relationships not only with the space agencies, but also with companies like Vodafone, uh, Nokia, and, and others. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, to mention, uh, the time is running out. So funding, we need about 45 million euros to get this all running. So um, we are now closing seed round and uh, first quarter 2020 uh, A round. So feel free to talk with us. I think you even have a little bit of more time, you know. So that's, that's, that's a luxury if you're like the last, like we were okay. last time as well. And, and there's one photo that I want to share with you. So we have quite a good, interesting team set up, not just from the partner side, but also our team is kind of really combined of a good set of people like uh, younger engineers who kind of like open-mindedly uh, approaching space exploration, really like from the SpaceX attitude, as well as mixed with a lot of the senior people, many of them who even worked at the Apollo program. So that is something where we're quite proud of, that we kind of combine these group of people, like really um, people who have the knowledge and people who have kind of who are still bold enough to kind of uh, try new approaches there. So, yeah, and I think um, the only thing I don't feel that we haven't met, uh, mentioned so much is uh, really, in general, um, the, the, I think the media side, something that was on one slide, like there's yeah. also media revenue. Um, that's a little bit weird in a way that we talk about space exploration and lunar logistics, and then we talk about media revenue, just mentioning it that we have a partnership also with Red Bull, specifically the Red Bull media team, to. Um, bring to the world the first footage from an Apollo landing site. So that is something where we're specifically aiming for the first mission, wanting to go back to Apollo 17 after 50 years and taking pictures from the scientific side together with NASA, doing the exploration of the landing site, but also going to the public and say, you know, we have the first images of Apollo after 50 years. And this is something um, I think it will help inspire a lot of people. It will help us get a lot of customers and people excited about space exploration because we see the main potential for customers and revenue outside of the traditional industry. That is what PT scientists is quite good at, is extract, I, attracting non-space actors. You know, if we talk about companies like Nokia, like Audi, like Vodafone, um, these are companies which are not specifically space companies, and they are involved with us, and that is something where we're quite good at, and I think this will open up much further the larger we increase the infrastructure element, so making it easier to operate in space, and as well as kind of broaden the scope for people who know about what happens. And then, and of course, uh, we make some money with it. So uh, when Red Bull does all of the fancy media work, then we get a profit share of the licensing. So uh, it's a win-win situation for us, like exciting people and then also generating some revenue with that. Okay. Yep. You want to add something? or? You know, the media is actually, for us, uh, in the first mission, also very important, because for now, no private company has landed on the moon. And uh, our first uh, target, as Robert said, is the Apollo 17 side. So we think that um, we can have 20% uh, of our um, uh, needed uh, investment could be covered uh, already from the media revenue, um, which is significant. Yeah. yeah. And other than that, of course, uh, we're always looking for interested partners in topics of investment, so just reach out to us. And feel free to talk to us after this presentation. Super yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.